Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested here at CES 2016, and I'm here at the Razor booth getting an update with OSVR. If you guys weren't familiar, OSVR was their initiative to create a hackable virtual reality headset. We've seen it at previous CESs, at GDCs, and finally now they've implemented some positional tracking, some new technologies. So I'm here with Jeevan, you're the product marketing manager for OSVR. Let's start off with what's changed since we saw it from last year. Okay, so in terms of the OSVR ecosystem, we are now at 300 partners. Um, that's at least double since CES. Um, we've got support from Intel, we've got support from NVIDIA, Ubisoft, Gearbox, Techland. Um, we're working with AAA VR game developers like Gaijin, and we have support from 360 Cinematic Studios like Legendary as well. Um, on the peripheral side of things, um, we've grown from su just supporting, for example, companies like Leap Motion. We now support Nord Labs, Perception Neuron. Um, we have new positional tracking interfaces. Um, we're working with IR camera developers as well. Um, we're basically trying to expand the ecosystem, trying to get more packed into that because at the end of the day, it is about choice. And that's what we want to bring to consumers. Always VR is about being able to pick and select what you want to use, when you want to use it, for the VR experience that you want. As opposed to other VR companies who are making just their own headsets, controlling everything end-to-end -end from the software, the interface, the hardware, uh, you're working with partners and it can be, you're opening, basically you know, creating the interfaces to connect all these devices together. But it all does start with the headset and the OSVR headset prototype that you guys have made and iterated on has changed over time. Yep. What's new in this headset? Okay. Um, it's for, for use. All right, so the most immediate difference that you notice is the fact that we do not no longer use IPD adjusters. Um, we, IPD adjusters were fantastic for customization, um, but we felt that we needed to offer a simpler solution as well. So um, we, we increased the size of the eye box and we put in focal adjusters. So you can literally just pick it up, put it on, adjust the focus and you're good to go. Um, we've also included positional tracking. So that was something that the CS version did not have. Um, the positional tracking um, is at, works at 100 hertz refresh rate and it's 360 degrees. So um, there are IR LEDs actually on the faceplate and there are IR LEDs here. Um, moving forward, we are intending on supporting um, lighthouse type technology and uh, base station type technology and the camera technology that within actually allows us to do that together with the OSVR SDK. So um, once again, because of the software platform, it is modular, we can expand upon it and uh, we are working on coming up with a multi-camera multi setup um, similar to the Vive. That's right. Um, so you, with positional tracking, you have at least some tracking parity with those other ecosystems, other platforms. You can adapt their software. And demos we've seen before, like from Epic and Unreal, uh, into OSVR and like what I just tried. Uh, now in terms of the display though, are you still running just a 60 hertz panel? Is it, are you guys implementing things like low persistence uh, to enhance comfort for users? Okay, so um, right now we are working with a 1080p uh, with screen with 60 hertz, I mean 60 frames per second. Um, the interesting thing about this headset is that we understand that the market is still growing, the market is still very niche, and always VR's vision really is about bringing VR to the mainstream. And in order to do that, we designed this headset that really is a balance of quality and system requirements. I mean, the headset is priced at USD $299.99, um, and it can, it, you can use a mid-tier gaming PC and upwards to run it. So, um, end of the day, a consumer doesn't need too much financial investment to get a taste of VR. Um, this isn't the only headset we're going to make. Um, interestingly enough, this is a reference design. Um, we have partners that I can't mention um, that actually take our design, adapt from it, add in their own technology and brand it. And we also are working on future iterations. So the HDK really is kind of like a, like a first big step, um, you know, trying to open up the market, trying to get more developers, trying to share the technology with developers um, you know, for the ecosystem. I get the idea as opposed to trying to shoot for the moon and make you know, a, a multi $600 high-end VR experience. You're targeting it with the reference design, something $300, maybe more off-the-shelf components. Performance, you're going to need maybe a, a lower-end PC or mid-range PC to run it and really get developers on board to make content yep. for it. Uh, and you talk about having 300 partners. Can you talk about any of the content partnerships and what they're producing specifically for us VR? Um, well, I, I can't share the specifics right now because everything is work in progress, but we do have more than 100 game developers on board, um, ranging from AAA game devs like Ubisoft, Gearbox, Software, Techland, um, Gaijin Entertainment, and um, all the way on the other end of things, we have 360 degree cinematic content like Legendary Studios, Jaunt, Viridio, uh, Wii VR. We're working with all of them to provide end-to-end -end content for everybody, just like the software platform that provides um, multiple peripheral options. We provide a whole spectrum of content for people to enjoy. OSVR is about choice, end of the day. Uh, 
Yep. And then when can developers or consumers pick up the reference unit or hardware from your partners? Okay, so it's available right now. The HDK can be purchased for $299 on the Razer store. Um, our partner headsets are still in development, although the Vuzix 970 over at the Vuzix booth is already uh, an OSVR partner and is really integrated into the ecosystem. But um, in general, yeah, it's good to go. And um, I mean, we, we just we just love the fact that it's that it's really accessible, and um, you know it's a good way to get into VR if you have a bit of cold feet. Um, in terms of content, because we are open source, we don't just support people developing for our platform. We're actually working on supporting other platforms like Steam VR. Um, we do have beta support for that right now, um, and essentially once we get that down right, people are going to have be able to kind of tap on content from our ecosystem, from Steam VR, from different platforms and ecosystems. So it really is about being open. It really is about choice. All right. well, thanks for the update with OSVR, and good luck, and look forward to more to come. Thanks so much.